The following program is brought to you by his Off Productions. My man, I, I just can't do it. You got to have to pull me out of the screaming, screaming for my life. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to an all new episode of the podcast that everyone listens to. I am the worst at voices. I am the first to admit I really am cringeworthy when it comes to any sort of uh, impersonations out there. Uh, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? How are you guys? Uh, dude, we are back with an all new episode. I'm feeling a little bit of fucking, a uh, little bit of a, little bit of an energy in the room here, guys. I'm, uh, we're bringing it to the microphone, right? We're just gonna, we're just gonna add this, right? You know, or shoot off the cuff, right? This shit ain't live, man. Should go live, right? We should go live. Doing in front of a live studio audience. I've also, I've, I, I, thought about that before in life like oh do a live podcast but like man i just don't want to suck i don't know dude like that's my problem is like oh shit you know first first off i don't want to suck secondly i don't know i don't know man i i i I think i put myself on a d the 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 d list uh you know here in this town when it comes to entertainment (laughs) i am i'm a solid d lister and I should be proud of that, you know. I should be proud to be on the outside, and you know, maybe, maybe that's just you know not being like, hey man, maybe, maybe put a little bit more effort into your shit, you'd be a little bit better. It's just like, fuck, I barely have any time as is, and then you kind of just get to the point where it's like, I don't really give a fuck anyway. Like it's more about entertaining myself, you know. For the longest time though, you always want to achieve that. You always want to be like, hey guys, look at me, look at me, up come Porter, look at me. You know, you do your TV show, you do your stupid stand-up comedy. It's like, oh, look at me. It's like, ah, no one gives a fuck. No one gives a fuck. That's fine. That's life, dude. No one gives a fuck in life. It's crazy. So, it's crazy how we just go for a walk. That's all we're doing. We're walking through life, man. Making the best of life. People come and go. Just don't know. Oh, shit. Am I trying to rhyme that? I always wish I could rap. Fuck, I always wish I was better at music, dude. Fuck, I was. I always wish I was better. I can't fucking freestyle. I can't, like, keep a beat barely. I know I can, but again, it's just, like, it's applying myself. Like, I think that's, like, all of our downfall, right? It's, like, we just don't apply ourselves. We make 20 fucking excuses. And we just don't apply ourselves as much as we could. Like, I apply myself in certain things, but in long-term things, like, in terms of, like, things that are actually going to put me in a better, you know, spot, like, do I take the time to write every single day? No. <laughs> Am I, you know, like, I, I was better in my younger years, but as time has gone on, it's just, you know, you get into your 30s and you're just like, well... I'm okay with, you know, not not living the dream, man. You know, you, you, get, you get your wild and crazy dreams out there. You're like, ah, shit, I want to travel the country. I want to go perform. I want to play. And it's just like, oh, that's, you know, that's not what's in the cards for you at this moment. Doesn't mean it can't happen down the road, dude. Don't think I ever fucking lose faith on that end, dude. Does not mean it won't happen. But again, man, it comes down to applying myself. You know, really just pushing myself and it's like have i really pushed myself you know and the answer you know the answer is no like you just fucking if you if anybody's out there like yeah man i fucking i push myself at every single fucking limit i go to the fucking limit every single day man i'm at a 10 every fucking day you know it's like you're full of shit sorry it's easy to lie about ourselves you know it's just like we want to honestly you know oh no i'm doing the best i can i'm doing the best i can kevin porter and you know, it's not taken away from anybody that is doing the best they can. If you know you're doing the best you can, then you're like, Kevin Porter, you're right. You're fucking right. Tell them the truth. Speak the truth right now. So, simple answer is, just do better, right? Just every day, get up. You're like, what's up? What's up today? It's a beautiful day to be alive. Steal that from fucking Coco, Joey Coco Diaz. Thank you. Fuck. Love that shit, dude. I luck and love listening to fucking Joey Diaz. But yeah, man, just get up. It's a beautiful day to be alive. 
shout out, go look at the sun, drink some water, do what you gotta do, floss your teeth, brush your teeth. Man, every day is a new day and a new challenge and a new adventure. And yeah, most likely, you're probably gonna end up doing the same thing day in, day out. But hey, Let's enjoy the ride while we're here, right? Let's make it as fun as we can. So even if we are doing the monotonous things of taking care of your family, of going to work, of doing anything you you may or may not really enjoy doing, like why not challenge yourself and be like, you know what? I'm going to be the best person I can be today and I'm not going to let fucking bullshit bother me and just let it go and just fucking let it go, you know? And put your fucking best foot forward every single day. Like that's... That's how you achieve mastery, right? You just got to put your best foot forward every single day. And I don't, I don't think that achieves being becoming a master in life because, again, you know, it's like it's not like to say we're ever going to master life, obviously. I mean, that's the age, the age old question. How do you master life? It depends on, you know, it depends on how you look at it, man. I mean, if you're a religious person and, you know, you try to obtain you know, whatever is uh, within your religion. Um, if you're a free thinker, I mean, you're like, man, I want to, you know, I want to learn everything about this and that and this and that. And, like, you just, you, just, you just go and do what you want, I suppose, and you're able to, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have the fucking answers. I don't, none of us have the answers. I smoked a little too much fucking weed before I started recording this fucking thing. I'm not going to lie. A little spaced out, man. Shit crazy it's crazy man i don't know dude my head is feeling good Woo! so are you still listening hey are you still listening right now or hey are you listening are you listening kevin porter ah bring it gotta bring it every single time what make the best thing that you can make it i'm gonna make the i'm gonna record the best podcast opening that i can right now (laughs) yeah I don't know. I don't know, dude. I just, I, I'm just sick and tired of being sick and tired in life, and I'm just sick and tired of it. I don't, I don't want to be that way anymore. I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be a person that, you know, sulks over like, oh, oh, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did, I did. and like, it's, it's not like every day is gonna be a good day, right? You know, like yesterday, I had like one of the worst days ever, one of the worst fucking days ever, and yeah, like during the time of while it was bad. You know, yeah, I was just, like, a little down and everything, but I'm, like, you know, the whole time, like, you know, like, I, I feel like I've put myself in a better position to where I can handle a situation like that mentally where I'm able to just, like, let it go. That's that's becoming a master, right? Just letting it go. Just like that. Oh, I can get over that. No problem. Boom. Instantly. Oh, I'm not in that situation anymore? I'm I'm grateful to just be out of that situation and to move on from my life. But so I'll acknowledge that situation really sucked. I, I you know, had no fun while I was in it. But at the same time, I'm not going to let that ruin the rest of the moments that I have in that day. So, boom, right there. Right there. You're good. And then you just go do things that make you happy. That, you know, put you in that spot, you know. Like, I don't know, dude. I think I want to go skateboarding more. I know I've talked about that a lot on this podcast, but I want to go skateboarding more. And I think that puts me in a happy place. You know, like if you like to play video games, I don't know, man, do you like play video games? I like to, I don't think I get to play enough video games, you know, like look forward to this shit. Like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. I know we're all caught up in our dreams and shit, but I, I, I try to live a very straightforward life in the sense of, you know, nothing what's the word you know what's the word 10,000 hours well hey maybe I'm gonna operate on 40,000 hours and you know maybe we're just building up and we're building up and we're building up year by year by year because it's not to say that like I'm the same old shit that I was 10 you know 12 years ago I'm not like I would say I don't know it's our it's arguably on the same level in terms of maturity wise where <laughs> the types of jokes we laugh at on on our fucking shows and stuff but at the same time am i am i the same fucking person no i'm i'm definitely not that same person i'm fucking glad i'm not the same person i was in my 20s dude i look all my 20s i'm like damn you know 
put ourselves in some really shitty situations that were not fun while we were in those situations. But you look back on it, and it's like I will never do that ever again. <laughs> you know, I learned from my my I, I learned my lessons in life. You know, and it's like it's good. It's good to have those experiences. It's good to fuck up. You know, it's good to fucking you know pull yourself up because when you're up, then you fucking know you're up. And that's what's up. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, on today's episode, we have Kevin Richardson making his debut. Now, I met Kevin several years back when I saw the calling, uh, the uh, the calling, the calling of Kevin Richardson, uh, um, an ad on Facebook for a play, I guess. Uh, Kevin runs Stage Artists of Yakima. Uh, Stage Artists of Yakima has been around for several, uh, I, I'm going to go on limb, maybe five years? I met him like three years ago, so maybe four. Kevin Richardson's been in the play scene, uh, the play scene, the theater scene, I guess is probably a better way of putting it. Uh, forgive me, because my ways of English are none. I don't know. Uh, nonetheless, I met Kevin while doing several of his plays, and I've always thought as uh, Kevin as uh, one cool cat. He's a cool dude. I've always gotten along with him. I've always had good conversations with him. And so you're able to be a little fly on the wall today and listen to this wonderful episode. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, fucking welcome to the podcast that no one listens to. I I easily entertain myself sitting out here in my office fucking talking to myself into this microphone because for the most part, I'm just talking to myself right now. You listeners are able to hear my voice and to enjoy the shows, but I'm just talking to myself half the time. So I know, ladies and gentlemen, I uh, got a plug, 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 plug. Do we got to plug some shit? Yeah, dude, we got to plug some fucking episodes. So before we get to Kevin Richardson, ladies and gentlemen, have you taken the time to listen to the In the Mouth of Madness podcast? Dude, this is like single handedly the most offensive podcast out there. I, I challenge you <laughs> to find a, a more offensive podcast, my friend. And if you can, Find me on Twitter. I'm not on Twitter. I, I'm not on social media anymore. I have, I have, that is like one thing I've fucking given up here recently. Fucking fuck Facebook, motherfucker. I post my shit and I'm out. I'm fucking out. I'm not checking that shit. Staying off my fucking phone, motherfucker. Fuck you, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, you little bitch. <laughs> so yeah, if you can, check out the, the In the Mouth of Madness podcast. We just dropped a brand new episode uh, last night. Uh, Breakdown, dude, the 1997 classic. Uh, starring Kurt Russell uh, and some other bitches. <laughs> so yeah, dude, it was a, it was a fun time recording that episode. And then, um, as always, tomorrow we do have a brand new episode of the In the Mouth of Madness podcast. Now, or pff, I'm sorry, I apparently smoke way too much weed. We we do not have a brand new episode tomorrow. That came out yesterday. We have a brand new episode of the Totally Necessary Wrestling podcast coming out tomorrow. So. If you're a fan of professional wrestling, and if you're not, I don't know why. It's the most amazing thing on this earth. Well, you totally want to hear my takes on professional wrestling, right? Like I told you, like I'm easily entertained talking to myself in an office by myself. Does that say anything about my fucking sanity? Let that one sit for a second. Woo! I don't know. Uh, No, no, Kevin Porter does not say anything about your fucking sanity. It just says, you're a sane motherfucker, dude. You are a sane, sane man. So totally check that out. I don't think we have anything else coming out this weekend. There is uh, the uh, fucking um, New Japan G1 um, special that's airing this Saturday on um, out of uh, Dallas, actually. It's it's in, in America. It's not in Japan. So I wasn't necessarily planning on watching it and the way it looks like my fucking weekends unfolding it doesn't really seem i'm gonna have uh much for any 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 professional wrestling uh during the day uh saturday fucking family's in town for fourth of july i know they don't listen to this fucking shit motherfucker i want to go see fucking spider-man tomorrow i want to fucking go see spider-man i had it all planned out i was like fourth of july it's off right get up because we got to fucking pull garlic and shit so it's like all right let's get all our fucking work done in the morning and then like come afternoon we could fucking go to like a matinee and we'll go see the new fucking spider-man movie and it'll be fucking amazing just like no my fucking family's a down. i was like fucking damn it damn it and then like this weekend you know it's like i understand your family's talents i know we're I know we got to see him, but it's like, why can't we still go see a matinee? We're out of there by two. We go up there. We have the whole entire day. Oh, we got to go right after 
get done pulling garlic. It's like, what? We're going to be done pulling garlic at like nine o'clock in the fucking morning. You know what I mean? Like, really? I don't want to go out and sit at your sister's house all fucking day for the, for all weekend. You're telling me we got to do this all fucking weekend. Like, I love your family. Don't get me wrong. And if you're listening, I love you. Honestly, I do. But that being said, I just wanted to fucking see Spider-Man, dude. I just wanted to fucking... If I would have been able to see Spider-Man, I'll, I'll fucking chill all weekend. But to the fact that I can't go see Spider-Man on fucking 4th of July on a day I earned off, America's fucking birthday? Fuck that, motherfucker. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and roll on into this episode. Uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, um, I give you Kevin Richardson. All aboard! What's up, Kevin Richardson? Welcome to the podcast that no one listens to. Thank you, Kevin. Your home is lovely. Thank you, dude. Um, I'm glad you made the trek out here, dude. How, how, was your, how was your drive out here? It was delightful. However, I was filled with rage by this one woman as I turned on to, like, um, before you get on to, what is it? You turn on to 80. Okay. Yeah. Um, so there I am. There are two lanes, right? There's one of these, like huge ass trucks with all the wheels that's carrying a bunch of shit you know the big ones Mm -hmm. and there's this old woman in a Volkswagen I don't know about cars but some kind of something or other and she's like trying to get onto the road and she cuts me off so I'm filled with rage and I honk my horn and how how close of a call was it not terribly nothing awful would have happened but it was her attitude it was that she chose to cut in front of me and fill me with rage which as you know is a problem and happens all the time so it, so when it was an old when you say it was an old lady like how old exactly like really old like, or like probably like not 50. ancient but old enough to have like that perm that looks like a sheep okay so that's pretty that's yeah it's getting pretty old because like every old lady has that hair haircut, yeah. right if you walk into legends it looks like my grandmother is sitting in every chair Dude, i think like because you would think like as like the generations go by, that hairstyle would go out style for you old think people. It would. You, it would only be generational, like because like yeah, my mom, my grandma had hair like that, and she was born in, like what the thirties. You would think no one wants to look <clears> like <throat> their grandmother, but I don't think so. As the years go by, they all do. So I honk my horn. Okay. She doesn't care because she got to where she wanted to be, but um, she wants to change lanes now because this huge ass truck is in front of us with another car behind that, and she sees what's coming. Right, right. So she tries to change lanes, but then the truck changes lanes in front of her, oh, cutting no. her off. So um, now she is stuck behind this truck that she was trying to get around. So I like drive by and I honk my horn again to attract her attention. And she looks over and I flutter my fingers at her as if to say, I'm with your spirit lady. Oh, no, dude. So she's like, What did that guy just do to me? Yeah. With the fucking spirit figures? What? So I came out on top, but <laughs> okay. she walked right into that and it really set a bad tone for the rest of the drive. Damn, dude. But then I passed the cemetery and had okay. the Lord's Prayer that's like 20 feet tall, so I felt better. Felt better. Yeah, dude, that cemetery is pretty crazy, right? Like, it is. Yeah. I went to, I remember going to a funeral there like 10 years ago. I didn't, the, and when, at the time when I found out about the funeral, I didn't even know that fucking cere- that cemetery even existed. Like, I'd never gotten out this far, dude. Like, I've never, like, traveled too much, like, out into West Valley for the most part. It was a little surreal driving by it. Because when I was a very small child, maybe preschool, I had, like, this preschool friend who lived out here. Okay. And we would go to each other's houses from time to time, right. as children in preschool do. Right. And the image of that cemetery stuck with me because, like, it's distinctive looking. But I haven't been there since. Mm-hmm. And I've always kind of thought, I wonder where the hell that cemetery is. West Valley, obviously. Right, but right. I don't live here, so I don't know. This was the first time I'd seen it since, and I thought, oh, my God. That's the cemetery by Lindsay's house. She doesn't live there now, but the cemetery is still by her house. Wow. I don't know where her house is. It's like, like, it's weird because, like, when you're a kid too, it's like you know things that stick out to you. Like when you're a kid, like things that like stick with you your whole entire life, and then you see them like you know years later. I remember going into my elementary school and like walking in there, like when I was in high school or something. So it wasn't that far removed from mm-hmm. it, you know, but I was a little, far, a little removed. And, like, walking in, I just remember, like, the ceiling being so low to the ground. That's I remember true. as a kid, like, wow, this is, like, the tallest building I've ever been in, you know? Like, when weird. I was a senior in high school, we had this thing where um, everyone who had gone to that elementary school was invited back for a luncheon with the teachers or whatever the Christ it was. And um, so we were all back there, and we all, nobody mentioned the height, but everyone felt that the halls were narrower. Really? But what I thought was funny was the teachers said at the end, okay, does anyone want to go see their classrooms or whatever? 
people did, even though we remember mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. But the one thing people wanted to see was um, the inside of the other bathroom. Because mm-hmm. mm. we had never been in the boys' bathroom right. or the girls' bathroom, whichever sense. one you weren't. Right. But um, everyone wanted to see that, so... We walked through there. It was just a bathroom. I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> like, just, they have, why, why do women have more stalls? Like, <laughs> they have all stalls. They don't have urinals. What the fuck? Fucking, what, what high school did you go to? Eisenhower. Dude, that's where I went to high school. Oh, yeah. Huh? yeah. Maybe I knew that. Yeah. I think we did. I think we talked about it. You, so when, when you went back to the, when you went back there, um, was that before they tore it down or was it as they were like in the process of tearing it down? Oh, this was going back to the grade school. Oh, grade school. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, when you were in high school. Okay. Yes. When I was in high school, we went back to the that grade school. That makes sense. That makes sense. I'm fucking, I'm really high right now, Kevin Richardson. I'm not going to lie. We're following along. We're trying to make the best. <laughs> but, um, oh, shit. Did, but you go, did you go back to Eisenhower when they were tearing it down and stuff? I've driven by it and I saw the process, yeah. but I never went in or anything. Because there was like a Friday where they allowed like anybody from the public just to walk through the was school there? and stuff. Oh, yeah. that would have been fun. Yeah, it was really cool, dude. Because like I remember going into the, uh, the the theater, and I remember in high school, dude. Like I always wanted to like you know like perform, right? Like I always wanted to do what I'm doing now, you know, like with the TV show and like you know podcasting and like doing your plays and whatnot. Yes. Like, just getting out and being in front of people and shit. And so, but in high school, like, I didn't really have an outlet. Like, I took drama class, like, one time. I never did the plays or anything like that. It was basically just goofing off with my friends and shit. That was, like, that was my, you know, way of, you know, <laughs> you know, showed off skills or whatever. And, like, I remember going back for the final day and that final walkthrough. And I remember going out on the, the, the stage there. Hmm. Uh, or was it, was it the Little Theater? The Little Theater. The little Theater, right. And I remember going out on stage and, like, I was with Eric, uh, my friend in the wheelchair. You know, okay, yeah. Okay, so, like, we're there, and I, I just, I don't know, I did some, like, monologue piece or some shit, I just made it up, and then, like, you know, just as, like, my one time getting to perform on that stage, because they were gonna fucking tear it down, and then, like, some people that were in the backstage area, like, after I was done, they, like, came out and clapped for me and oh, shit, dude, okay. and I was like, oh, no, like, this is amazing. Did you ever uh, get, did you do the plays? I did. Um, I was president of the drama club junior and senior years, which was a big deal because until then there had never really been an established um, system going on there. Like person in charge then? Yeah. Like, yeah, tell me like like, your history into like, you know, plays and stuff because you have like a lot of knowledge on like. Well, high school was pretty interesting because um, I was there at a time when, Mm -hmm. um, well, let me see what the fuck happened if I can even remember. We had three teachers during the time I was there, and I was the only person who had all three okay. because I was the only one doing it freshman year, and that was the first teacher. Then we had the second, my sophomore and junior years, and then we had the last and current one, my senior year. So I was the only one with mm-hmm. all three. Oh, wow. What, who's a... Uh, because I, I, I took... What, what year did you go there? To, did you go to Eisenhower? Well, um... Of course, I claim to be a certain age, but in real life, okay, I we don't, you, have to, there. you don't have to say that. But um, I graduated in two thousand four, and I forget the teacher's name, but like she was a pretty cool teacher. Oh yeah, Babs. Okay, Babs. Yeah. Okay, okay. She was, Mrs. Lund was her name. Mrs. Lund. That's it, dude. That's no one would ever be disrespectful and just call her Babs. Of course. <laughs> no one. No one under the age of eighteen. You show up to like fucking first day after school. You're just like, what's up, Babs? You're like, you still can't use first name. We're not first name faces here. So, uh, what was the the first play that you that you actually worked on? Um, the, at school or at ever? school? Well, not not um, man. Let's go ever. I want to okay. go ever. So first ever was the Missoula Children's Theater, which is an outfit from Missoula, Montana. Shockingly, and they travel the country in this little red truck. They like to say it's two adults, and they bring the um, materials with them, costumes and scenery and stuff, to put on a week-long show with local children. Mm -hmm. So um, my first show ever, I was, oh Christ, first grade? Kindergarten or first grade. And I was a bat in Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Um, I did a couple of those. My big break came at the Warehouse Theater in second grade when we did a production of Cheaper by the Dozen, which people today might not realize used to be a period piece from the 20s. Now it's this weird crap with Steve Martin and Hillary Duff. I was going to say, Steve Martin do a movie? Like, I was like, but, I didn't um, know that was a fucking It's flight. a completely different story, okay. and it's about this couple who has the 12 children, mm-hmm. and I was the littlest one that appears on stage. You're supposed to believe there are like three or four more babies upstairs. Oh, wow. Okay. But I was the adorable littlest one, and I did a couple of things there. Mm-hmm. Um... As a teenager, I discovered that Toppenish had a group as well. I've heard of the Toppenish, yeah. yeah. I've heard of them. Yeah. 
the Toppenish Creek Players is what we were called. Okay. Um, I started there with Once Upon a Mattress. I was the prince, not the Carol Burnett role, although okay. I would have been pretty good. <laughs> um, we did several shows there. High school came and went during that time. Mm-hmm. Um, that brings us pretty much up to adulthood. Okay. Because yeah, I've always, like, like what, I, I met you about, I don't know, two, three years ago, I'd say? 2016 was here. So about three years ago, then. Oh, How That wild. was 2016, dude? Damn. That's intense. Oh, man. Like, I don't know. Like, when, when, like, cause I, I met you through Brandon Allen. Mm-hmm. I remember it was Brandon Allen. And I remember you hit me. Cause I remember the day specifically, I think you sent me a message or you sent out that casting invite for hair. <laughs> right, right. And I remember getting in. I was at the, I was at Hop Nation. And like, I was like, so like, I, I'm pretty sure I had a buzz or something, but I remember you like sending me a message, like, thank you for like, you know, your, your intention to this or whatever. Like, you said, you, you sent me a personal message. And I was like, all right, cool, man. So then like, I remember, um, like you know setting up the date with you to come to your house to do the tryout for hair and i remember um like it was katie so- sokol right it was she was there and i was there and then like so we did we read our, our spots and then you had to sing and dude i'm like the worst fucking singer dude <laughs> i am the worst singer ever so it was like i was like i remember leaving your house thinking like there's no way he's gonna get me up <laughs> but man <laughs> it was awesome dude because like I, i've just always loved like what you do do because like it's diy hmm. you know and like to me like i come from the pop the punk rock community and like that's how we've done everything dude it's like you just do it yourself so i've always admired that about you that you know oh. you were able to like go out there and just fuck into one man show dude because like i mean that's how i did my tv show for the longest time like i had people helping me and shit but i mean like if it wasn't for me fucking directing orders and shit like yeah. nothing's gonna get done someone has to be in charge of it yeah so how how do you how'd you get into that then like what was because i know you did plays before hair right so what was the history um, there? Well, the first one was I had an original play that was a little too niche to try to get anyone else to do it okay. because no one would want to. Um, it was, an, like I said, an original piece, but it had religious themes. It was built around me. Um, you'll never believe this because I've never done any such thing in any um, mm-hmm. subsequent show. But I walked around with next to nothing on for most of the show. Nice. Um, <laughs> so I just did that one myself with um, some friends. Okay. So how, did, how long does it take? How long did it take to write that? I started that in sophomore year of high school. I finished it as a freshman in college. Sophomore in high school, freshman. So that's like what, like three, four years? Three or four years. That's not bad, dude. Like, and I would imagine just that whole time, because like, I, I am not disciplined when it comes to writing. <laughs> I am so like I, every every day, I, every day, dude. I, I tell myself, "Oh my god, you should write down, sit down, and write, you know, write a thousand words." I just, I don't know, like, video games and movies, they, they just, like, they distort my attention. I get stoned, and it's like, oh, fuck. No, I, I'll, I'll just wing it this week at comedy. I'm not, I don't need to write five minutes. Fuck it. So, and then that ends, like, horribly. Then <laughs> I just eat shit. And it's like, okay, you need to write. <laughs> so, I just write the sporadic things that come to my head and just, like, roll them on stage. But, yeah, dude. What was the process for you, though? Um, it was pretty similar. I was doing book music and lyrics for this um, chamber musical. Okay. And I have um, some of those factors being stronger than others. Okay. So for a lot of time, it just bounced around in my head. Oh, this is what I would put here. Oh, we could do this song here. It was a couple of years of that before I actually got serious about sitting down at a okay. piano. Okay, let's figure out what this is going to be. Right. Um, it took shape pretty quickly after that, but it was a lot of work. Well, I wouldn't say work because I wasn't trying that hard, but... Um, it was a long time before I got to the point where anything materialized. Okay, okay, so just a lot of a lot of thinking and you know just writing down those ideas. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, dude. I need to write a movie. Oh, you should. I need to write a movie, dude. Brandon's always hitting me up. He's like, "Man, we gotta we gotta put together a project and shit." But I'm just like, "Oh, it's a commitment, though." It is. It really is. It's really hard. It's a lot of stuff you gotta do. It is. Yeah. So you had the one man show. Or the, you know, with a couple of friends helping you on that. And then what, what comes next? Um, there were a couple of years in the middle of that because um, I started a job. I had to um, devote a lot of attention to that. I lived like three different places mm-hmm. in that um, stretch of time. But, um, well, let me think. How long was that? From 2011, the next one was 2015. By that point, I was ready to get moving again. So we did the Glass Menagerie which was only four people, which I don't know if you've noticed this, but I have trouble getting enough people to um, do it. Yeah. So this small cast production seemed like a good idea, so I got that started again. It was a huge success. Everybody loved it. I got a lot of, um, excuse me, positive feedback from it, and that really encouraged me to just um, 
keep doing them as frequently as mm-hmm. I could. Mm-hmm. So over the course of the next year was um, when I accumulated a bunch of the core group that's usually in them. Okay. And um, from then it just kind of grew until I had a bunch of people helping out with it. And more things become possible when you get that. Right, right. So uh, you said you like write, do you still like write like original music, like just for fun still? Or like do you? Not particularly. I have a couple of other okay. ideas for musical projects, but um, the composing of the music is probably the weakest of the three elements okay. in that for me. Right. So I don't know if anything will ever come of that, but I did get one out and I'm pretty mm-hmm. happy with knowing that. Yeah. I've always, I've always like wanted to take this podcast and take it live and like put it out in front of an audience and like just do it as like, cause like it's more or less stage art in a sense, mm. but I don't, I don't know. Just Yakima is like just such a, a, a fucking shit town. It seems like sometimes when it comes to fucking projects like that. Right. So, um, what was the, what was the most amount of people that you guys ever drew for like for a crowd? Oh well, my, well, I forget the numbers. I know other people know, yeah. but hair was the largest, um, audience we ever got. Probably was, because of the nudity. That was quite the fucking project, dude. Oh, it <laughs> like, was. The, like, it's like, um, damn, dude. Like, what? What's what's the process of that? Like, how 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 do you how do you manage so many people on a set like that? Well, um, depending on the show, I don't always manage it. Yeah. So, like, when you when you because, like, man, I was just I was really impressed with everybody. It seemed like everybody knew their fucking lines. They really did, which yeah. doesn't happen every time. Yeah, I would imagine which. I went speaking of the graduate, dude. We went we oh, went to the graduate, God help dude. Us. God help us, right? It's like the first time we've ever like talked about the graduate like that, like whole whole fucking situation. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, dude. So that was like right after hair, wasn't it? That was the winter after. Mm. That was that awful winter with all the snow and ice. Damn, dude. I fucking hate ice and snow. This last year was really bad. It was. It was really bad. It was going so well until the very end. Right. Yeah, because, like, yeah, it was just, like, the last month, dude. Oh, that month was terrible. Yeah. I got fucking stuck in my driveway, dude, like, twice. (sighs) Twice. But, dude, like, uh, I don't know. We got fucking shit on. So fucking hard. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, but, yeah, dude, the graduate, man, like, I don't know. Like, that was, like, the only time I will ever take on a lead part. I I, I will never, like, the stress I went through, like, trying to memorize those fucking lines. It was, like, 80 pages of dialogue. Like, oh, man, how do you do that? Because I know you've done that more than once, dude. Like, how do you, how do you, I don't know, because, like, it's just, to me, it was really, like, mentally uh, exhausting, Mm -hmm. like, to say the least, at least, of the situation. It's a lot of work. I found um, once you've done it several times, you start to, um, I I don't know what word I'm about to say, acclimatize yourself to it. Mm -hmm. Um, It does get easier as you go on, but it's a lot of work, and not everyone's going to want to um, go on. But I do remember, um, I forget what show it was, something in the future that we were both in. Mm-hmm. And one of the girls said, oh, I ended up with such a big part in this. Why does Kevin, meaning you, get to have just a bit part in this? And I said, Kevin's earned a bit part. He had to be the graduate last year. Oh, yeah. That was uh, One Flew Over the Who was nest, right? right? Yeah. Because, yeah, I remember when we came back from the graduate afterwards, dude. Yeah, like, I was like, um, I can only say, like, you know, like, six lines, guys. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know, dude. That was, I mean, it was, it was quite the process, dude, but man, that was like right before I quit drinking. Hmm. <laughs> that was like a catalyst into me quitting drinking a couple <laughs> weeks later. But no, dude, like, uh, I just, ah, man, it was just, it was, it felt like an experience. Yeah, I don't know, like, kind of like, just, I don't know, it's like, you don't, you don't get to do that every day. Right. Like, go in front of a, like, you know, that was like, what, like 30 people there or something? Not just about for that one. Yeah. Yeah. I know, we're in just that small, tiny room. You know, like, just the black background. Right. You know? It was pretty interesting. It was. Yeah. So, um, you, got any, you got any plans right now? What, what, what do we got? What's Kevin Richardson got going on for the future? Well, I'm not entirely sure yet. Um, there will definitely be something next year. These last, um, I forget how long, well, Cuckoo's Nest was the last one, so going on two years now. We have had a couple of failed projects Works. and one that um, didn't quite materialize, but we made something happen. Mm-hmm. But um, our next major project will be next year. Um, I'm still working out with Melina, my vizier, who is leaving the country this coming year. Jeannie oh, from she, here, the yeah. pregnant one. Yeah. She wasn't pregnant, but it looked really real. <laughs> it was very convincing. <laughs> And um, this is going to be kind of her um, send-off, her okay. farewell to the American theater. Okay. So we're still working out what that's going to be. So that's going to be 2020? Right. Okay. 
Where is she moving to? Oh, what is it? Denmark. Denmark. Damn, dude. Where her fun. new husband lives. Okay. Yeah, I remember, she, so she did get married then. Okay. That's right. Okay, cool, man. Did you go to the wedding? I didn't. It was over there. Oh, okay. Her sister went, so. That's good. That's good. Um, fuck, dude. How, how many? Have you have you ever traveled outside the country, or, like? I have been to Canada, Mexico, and England. So I've only been to Canada. How was it? It was good. I went to Whistler. So Whistler I don't know where that is. You keep going. You, from what I remember, because I went there in, like, 96. I was, like, 12. Mm-hmm. So, like. It was like me and my uncle were talking about it because my uncle is the one that took me up there, and like we were talking about it the other day because like because he's telling he's telling me now he's like oh let's take a family trip you know like go up somewhere he's like yeah let's go back to Whistler and it's like I'd have to get a passport now it's like when ninety six dude like we just drove up to the border I remember and they just pretty much just let us through like it wasn't even anything and so like it's a long drive though it is it is a long drive up there but it's I mean you get up there and it's really fucking pretty dude like you're up in the mountains basically but you have to take a ferry no we didn't have to do a ferry. I forget where all I've been, but I remember taking a ferry oh, that was, a couple of like times. That's like Vancouver Island. Is that Vancouver Island? I don't know. There's an island like right off British Columbia. I don't remember what it was called. Okay. Okay. I, I like that like part of the, the country, you know, like up the corner of like, you know, the Pacific Northwest, hmm. like Bellingham, you know, like uh, just that whole coastline, dude. It's attractive to see. Yeah. I love that shit. Fucking, um, where, where have you traveled in the United States? Oh, not very many places. I have been to Oregon. Montana. I'm trying How's to think. Montana? Oh, um, I saw California and Florida because I've been to the Disney places. I don't think anywhere else. What was your experience in Montana? Um, I went to a um, summer theater arts camp. Okay. When I was in junior high. That's pretty cool. What was that all about? Just like workshops. Um, well, it was um, two weeks of teenagers thrown together in these two camps that combined at the end. And it was the year after September 11th, so it was this um, very big red, white, and blue sparklers um, history of the American nation, which was actually a pretty cool show. I was Zebulon Pike, who, I don't know if you know this, but he discovered um, a fucking mountain called Pike's Peak. I didn't realize that. Oh, he did. No, no. Where is Pike's Peak? I don't know. <laughs> I always think, like, I don't know. I automatically think, like, Pike's Market in Seattle. No. I say that. I don't think it's there. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't know why I thought, like, it's like, oh, is, it a, is that Washington State? <laughs> is that Washington State? I don't know. Oh, man. Um, what, okay, so tell me your experience with going to Disneyland. Because I've been to I've been to Anaheim, mm-hmm. and I, I went to Disneyland. I went to when it was a California adventure. How old were you when you went? I was, oh... Well, I was five. I do know that. Damn, dude. That I, I, damn, I went when I was 17, mm-hmm. okay? And I'm, I'm way more appreciative of the fact that I went when I was 17 rather than I went when I was, like, five, dude. Because, like, at, at five, like, you're not, like, I don't know. Right. You're five. <laughs> like, What are you going to remember? Not much, yeah, I can tell you. 17, I was able to, like, wander around the park by myself, mm-hmm. go get on rides. Like, I don't know, dude. It was a pretty fun fucking time when I went. <laughs> so, um, but, yeah, what, what do you remember from, from when you were five, though? Um, that was when um, Aladdin was just about to come out. Oh, okay. So I remember Aladdin was everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, they had all the characters out walking around. I remember that dominating. I got this really cool ass thing. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Jafar has like that huge staff with yeah. the cobra. Yeah, with the. Yeah. And when he gets really evil, like it opens his mouth and it can shoot yeah, fucking like, lasers at people or whatever. It controls people's minds and shit. Yeah. You know, it makes the fucking Sultan all like, oh yeah, Jafar. And yes. makes him, feeds him the cookie. I love it when, uh, with the, the Patriot, the Patriot, <laughs> the, the parrot. I forget the parrot's name. Oh. Yeah, he like fucking feeds him, feeds him the crackers and shit. <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey plays him. Yes. Yeah. But I got one of those. It was plastic. Nice. It wasn't that big. But it was like the staff with the cobra head. And when you push this button on the back, its eyes would light up and its <laughs> mouth opens and goes, Rah! which yeah. they don't fucking make that noise. But the one I had sure the hell did. Okay, that's amazing, dude. I remember when I was uh, when I was probably around the same age, like I remember getting like an Aladdin toy set. Hmm. It had like the the big tiger uh, when it, that comes out of the desert. You know, All right. He goes in to go get the you know the the lamp, and like I had that and like Aladdin the genie. So like I I'm a, like a fan of pro wrestling. So like I just used that as my entrance for like dude up until like I like got rid of my toys and stuff. <laughs> like I, that was a staple in my toy <laughs> section up until yeah I don't know because I played with toys up until I was like at least thirteen. I still play with toys, dude. but I have kids now, so that's my excuse. 
See, when they move out in like you know the next like ten, five, ten years. Now you have no then I don't have an excuse. <laughs> but I guess it's socially acceptable now for people our age to like just embrace our childhood. You know, that seems to be the fashion. It does, dude. I mean, that's what like. It's yeah, it's like the whole. It's like once Big Bang Theory hit, dude. That's like mm-hmm. when culture. There's like a kind of a culture. It's very big culture shift in the last ten years, in regards to you know just yeah, like nerds nerds rule the world, dude. There has been. <laughs> And all the fucking comic books. Do you ever read comic books or anything? No, I know nothing about them. Okay. I barely know anything. I didn't see I didn't read comic books when I was a kid. I was never into them. But it wasn't until I was an adult. That's when like I started like picking up comic books and stuff. And I really don't know shit about comic books, but I have comic books and I've read them and they're fun to read. I don't even know about the superheroes mm-hmm. and I feel so locked out of the um continuity because there's mm-hmm such an industry and a franchise about everything right. I don't know who the characters in these movies are I know who Superman and Spider-Man are I know he has spider-like attributes but I don't know what he does so um yeah that's just a world that isn't really open to me but Understand. I hear about them and dude like the, the amount of storylines though that they have going like decades upon decades it's like i felt i felt overwhelmed when i first got into it because i'm like where do i even start it's i like, feel well, like i can't even start because i'll never yeah. be able it's like watching a soap opera yeah that's good that's i don't know who's sleeping it. with who and who's having whose child while married i don't know this story's been going on since the 40s it's like your soap opera's really a thing anymore like you don't really hear about it but like you, you imagine they are i mean they still like because i know a bunch of them got canceled did they yeah for, and again i couldn't give you the like the days of our lives Young and the Restless, I would assume, is still on. That sounds familiar. General Hospital. Like, no, is it General Hospital? I don't know. Is that a soap opera? Yeah. Is, is it I'm thinking of ER. Show? That's not what it is. That's it could have been a TV show, like a primetime like, TV show, but General Hospital sounds like, a, I think that was a, a prominent, <laughs> a prominent uh, fucking soap opera. I never, see, I never watched them, but my mom watched them. Did you? Yeah. My mother didn't really do that, so I don't uh, know any. There was one where... Um, it had like this haunting piano theme that some gymnast girl danced to. That did I'm pretty like dun 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 dun. Fuck. That was one of them. I don't know which one is which. I never. I need to like. I don't know. I need to go down a rabbit hole. I need to go down because I remember like that's a prominent thing from my childhood too, dude. Was seeing my mom get the fucking the the because there was that there was um what the fuck was it a soap opera digest. Is there a soap opera digest? There, there what? There, I'm sure it's still around, but like it was very big in the ni- in the '90s and probably you know up until at least when the internet came around, <laughs> like predominantly. Whoa. But like yeah, the, and it would just be like a you know a guide to guide to keep up with the stories for the people that you know weren't able to like watch them every single day. You'd probably need it. They're so complicated and yeah. And you and think about then there wasn't DVR. I mean now you just record it and watch it watch it at night. You'd have to set up your VCR system back then. Right, you'd miss it. Yeah. You'd miss it. Yeah. I didn't, and we didn't even own a VCR as a kid. We had the VC, just a VCP, I guess is what it's called. It's just a video recording. Video, I don't even know how a VHS player. We'll just call it that. We'll call it a fucking straight VHS player. You couldn't record. All you could do is to have playback. You just played them? Yeah. Well, it just played videotapes. Like, it wouldn't record. My mom didn't buy the recording. Oh. She, was it, like, smaller? Mm, no, I think it was pretty, pretty much average on every other actual VCR just didn't have the recording option. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. That's cool. Pissed me off, dude. Because, like, I never got to record shit back when we were kids, dude. Like, I would go to my dad's house in the summer. He had a VCR, so I'd record (laughs) wrestling, and I'd watch MTV and record music videos, and, like, go back and watch all those, dude. It was, like, your own compilation video. That shit was fucking badass back in the day, dude. VCR tapes, dude. I love that shit. I still fucking rock my VCR. As you saw, as you came in, dude, we're, we're watching. We're like, last oh, night when we recorded, dude, those movies, like, we watched them both on VHS copy. So. I still do VHS, mm-hmm. too. I, yeah, dude. I think, dude, I think, for the most part, the quality's decent. I mean, at least, I don't know, it's a throwback to your, your childhood and shit. Well, here's my position on that. Okay. Um, it seems like something new keeps coming out. There was DVDs, and now mm-hmm. there's Blu-ray. this Blu-ray thing. Now and I don't 4K. know if they're... I hadn't even heard now. about that, but no. it never ends. No, dude, it's getting... They're, they're doing 8k now dude oh my god it's going to 8k that's the they already announced xbox is releasing a new system next year what is the k uh, that's a good question dude i need to ask a fucking smart person i'm not a smart person <laughs> i don't know i don't know 
I just, I just repeat things that they tell me. Here's my thing. When I was in high school and college, uh-huh. VHS was still um, current. Mm-hmm. So I amassed this like collection of them. All of a sudden, they stop being relevant. Mm-hmm. There's the next new thing and the next new thing. So I'm sitting here with all of these movies. They're still perfectly good. The movie's still on them. They still play. Yeah. And I think it must be one of those things people who really know about things might look at it and say, oh, well, mm-hmm. the picture quality or whatever is so much better on this. Maybe it is, but I can't tell the difference. Right. Well, the the quality's definitely better. Is it? I, I mean, it really is. But at the same time, though, like that nostalgic factor is what I like it for. I really can't tell, but I'm sure that's because, like... Oh, dude, I have, um... I'm have not you, sophisticated enough in my understanding to get it. Have, but... you, ever, have you ever watched uh, Escape from New York? I've seen the cover of the movie okay, a lot. Okay, With, I have, like the Statue of Liberty on yeah, the face. Yeah, yeah. So I have every single, uh, I have every single version of that on on release. I have the VHS copy, I have the DVD <laughs> copy, and I have the Blu-ray copy. And like the VHS copy, it's like scrambled, pixelated. Like it's it's fine, you know, for what we grew up with and stuff. Like to me, I look back on that very fondly. But then you go to a DVD, and I guess that's like a seven seven twenty version. And then you get to like the fucking blu-ray dude and like it looks like it would have looked like in movie theaters if you were like watching it back in like 1980 when it was released wow. yeah so like blu-ray like the quality takes you back to the theater and like on a 4k tv it makes it look at certain points like it makes it like relative to like actual real life like you you just watching them on the screen and like you see this movie that you've seen a million times on vhs or dvd and watching it on a 4k on blu-ray it just it looks the mo the, it's seamless motions and stuff and it's just oh. it's really fucking crazy, dude. Well, maybe I should find out about this. <laughs> yeah, well, because that's brand new information. No, for dude, me. for sure though, man. But like, I get why you want it. Like, I don't know, because my mom's the same way, dude. Like, I had this old like one of those box TVs. Like, you know, she's just like she's like I still want the flip phone. Like, I just want like I just want to keep it simple. I tried getting a flip phone recently, dude. I, I ordered one of the I, I um off Amazon. I was able to find an old uh, Verizon um uh, was it uh, with the Razer phones? Oh yeah, I remember that being a huge ass deal. Yeah, yeah, dude. I had one of those back in like two thousand seven, and like I was I was remember I was like, oh, this is a great phone. We'd say, oh, you have a Razer, you'd be like, oh yeah, yeah. look at my new Razer. Yeah. And so like I bought, I was like, I was I'm gonna texting get, on it. I was gonna get rid of my fucking iPhone, dude, because I was just like, I'm done with technology. I'm done. I'm just gonna get the fucking. <laughs> going back to a flip phone so I get it and like the battery is like just a piece of shit and it like it won't charge basically but like I remember like I can I, I got it turned on though for a little bit and I was like just looking around on it I was like yeah this is basic as fuck dude like compared to what we are like used to on a smartphone now it's like you know okay alright I'll stay with my iPhone sure is the battery inadequate because like that's how they are or because it's old I think it's because it's old okay I think like from everything on the reviews they basically said you gotta replace the battery with something newer um, the original battery wasn't gonna it doesn't stand the test of time yeah that wouldn't work so no but um it's good shit man it's good shit so what's up Kevin Richardson what's going on with you man how's life life is okay good I'm glad life is I don't know I feel good I feel good. I've been uh, I've been exercising a lot more. That's good. I've been uh, trying to do it like at least like four to five days a week. I got my gym membership back, Ooh. So, so I've been going and like using the rowing machine and shit. Where I mean, are you going for this? The West Valley uh, Fitness. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, it's like the closest gym to me, and I I don't know like when I initially lost like weight, like I, I just went there just because it was closest, and it's a pretty decent little gym, dude. Like not a lot of people are in there, mm. a lot of older people, so <laughs> you know, there's young people that go there too and shit, but like it's nice because like, yeah, there's not a lot of people, so and, like I use that rowing machine the majority of the time, oh. and I'll just like do, yeah, I don't know, so no one ever uses the rowing machine. Now when you say rowing machine, is it like simulating rowing a boat? Kind of, it's like you sit on it, you sit on it, like you know, a normal chair, and in front of you is this like, you know, this, uh, this, you know, like, you grab on to, like, this, like, handles, I guess you call them. <laughs> There's just fucking handles. And you pull back, and then this, the chair extends back, and, like, you're just in a, f- a motion of rowing Whoa. is what you're doing. So that, like, I, like, before before I, I canceled my gym membership last time, like, um, I was going, I'd do, do it for, like, 10 minutes, and then I'd go do something else. But this time around, like, lately, I'm, I'm trying to do, like, 30 to, like, 45 minutes on that, just, like, really just, like, try to like lose like <laughs> stomach weight and shit you know like stomach fat and all that shit and uh like yeah man it's been like i don't know dude my mood's been really good like i feel i'm not feeling like down or anything so well, that's good. a good way to feel yeah 
I need to discover exercise because um, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to be turning 25 soon, and I've been starting. Good age. It's good age. And I've been starting to notice, like, around in here, Mm -hmm. things are getting a little flabby, and I want to get that taken care of before it um, catches hold. It's very smart. You got to be proactive, dude. I wish I was proactive, dude, because I got hella fucking fat. I, I got, I went up to like two ten, dude. Like was my like highest weight, dude. And like I checked my blood pressure one time, and I was like, oh shit, that's fucking high. <laughs> so like, yeah, dude. I just, yeah. If I would have been proactive, I would never had gone down that road. But yeah, it's, it's smart. But yeah, dude. Like I don't know what kind of what kind of shit do you do you like to do? Well, I discovered exercise a couple of mm-hmm. years ago. Um, you know where I used to live, over yeah. by yep. Franklin Park. Mm-hmm. And I discovered that it was pleasant to um, go over and walk around the track. Yep. And it does. It makes you feel so much better. Yeah. And um, it was a very positive exp- I haven't started up doing it again this summer, which I've done for the last mm-hmm. two years. So I don't know if that's ever going to happen. I think you should. But I do have to say, yeah. speaking of where we used to go to high school. Okay. Last year when I was there, um, there was like a week when cheerleaders from Davis High School were there like practicing. They're like throwing each other in the air and stuff. Uh-huh. And they had all these chants they're doing, so I would hear them doing it. And they're like, go, pirates, go, beat those cadets. And all I could think is, oh, in your dreams. Dude, Davis always lost to us, dude. <laughs> they always did. That, I was really I was really pissed off when they took Davis out of, because like, for the division that Eisenhower and Davis were in, was like, um, you know, the Yakima Valley division or something. I don't, I don't know. But it was like, no, it wasn't was Yakima Valley, but it was like Richland, Tri-Cities, you know, this, the whole central Washington, I guess, is, like, what our division was or whatever. The diocese, if Yeah, you will. but they split up the fucking divisions, and Eisenhower is in one, and Davis was in the other. So when we f- fucking played each other each year, it really didn't fucking mean shit. Like, they totally... So are they not, like, rivals now? I mean, they're ri- city rivals, but, like, sports-wise, not, it, they're they're in two different divisions, I believe. Uh-huh. So, like... Well, that's time. messed up. Yeah. I did. I want to go to, like... I want to go to more sports fucking games there and shit, dude, like... I want to go to, like, see, like, some high school football or something. Like, I don't know. Seahawks games are expensive, dude. <laughs> They're fucking expensive. Like, I'll go watch some high school kids play, dude. You know? I uh, don't know. Go to a college game. You ever, is there any sports you're into? I'm sure there are. Yeah? I wouldn't know about that. Okay, okay. So, taking it back to, like, when we were in high school. Yes. When you had to take PE. Yeah. What was your favorite PE class that you had to do? Well, here's the thing. And I think I'm safe to admit this now. Okay, okay. But um, my freshman year, I did one... Did we have trimesters? I think it was a trimester. Yeah, it was trimesters, yeah. I was in marching band for one trimester because I had been in band in middle school. So mm-hmm. it was kind of assumed you were gone with it. I didn't care for it. Um, I stopped doing that. I moved on to other stuff. That was okay. You don't stick with everything forever. Right. But I had figured out that um, if you do that, you get... Um, PE credits for doing that. Oh, no shit, dude. So, for the next couple of years, um, I would get a PE waiver out of the office and fill it out and put it through even though I hadn't taken marching band. Finally, the principal came up to me and she said, look, I know what you've been doing. Don't think I haven't noticed. I have bigger fish to fry, so I haven't made a thing out of it. But you can't keep doing that forever. You're going to have to take some kind of PE your senior year. So I said, okay. <laughs> You're like, you ma- I made it through my whole entire, <laughs> all of us my entire high school so career. I did have to um, take a trimester of yoga my senior year, which was cool. They offered yoga? They did. Wow. And um, you would just go up. There was this semi-darkened room. Okay, so you know how there used to be the gym? Mm-hmm. And there was, like, the um, workout room? Yeah. There was this little room yeah. off of the workout room that was just, like, gym mats all over the floor, and it was dark and um, cool in temperature in there. Right. And we would just, like, lie there, and the teacher would go through all the poses and stuff. You could do it with him if you wanted to, but if you just wanted to, like, lie there and talk to people, you could do that, too. Wow. So that was the only P.E. that I ever took in all of high school. So put the fuck, get down, dad, or dog, motherfucker, and stop talking. <laughs> I love taking yoga, dude. Do you still take it? Like, do you still I do don't. It? No? I haven't since. Yeah, I, um, I've gone to the yoga studio up there on Knob Hill. Yes. The hot yoga studio there. Dude, I've, I've only got to do it a handful of times. It's always been something in the back of my head that I want to implement, like, once a week. And, like, like doing hot yoga, like, I don't know. Again, kind of, like, similar to the exercise. Mm. Like, you come out of there, dude. And, like, for one, you sweat all the, like, just, you, you like, with doing it in hot, the hot uh, fucking room, you sweat out all those fucking, 
like if you're like me, you know, you need to ingest a lot of toxins, fucking, you sweat it all out, <laughs> and so, you know, you sweat out all that shitty food, and like, you know, all that, all that garbage and shit, dude, and like, I don't know, I just, it's, it's just something like, it really does like, help your mind, and like, in terms of like, mental health and all that stuff. When they say hot mm-hmm. yoga, is it like, temperately hot in there? It's really humid, um, it's like, as a guy, like, I always have to take my, I always go in there and take my shirt off, because mm-hmm. like, there's no way, I, you sweat a fucking ton, dude, like, Gross. you have to like, I spend, like, I, I drink a good amount of water throughout the day anyway, um, so, like, you really gotta concentrate on, if you're gonna go in there, like, say, in the afternoon, make sure you're drinking a shit ton of water throughout the day, because you're gonna go in there and sweat it the fuck out, dude. It's Is that the same principle you. as a sauna? Pretty much. Okay. Except you're just doing yoga in it. It's exactly, it's exactly like a sauna. You know? Okay. So if you were just to go sit in there, you know, you essentially do the same thing, but instead you're, you know, you're doing your fucking, you know... <laughs> I don't know. I always try. I always like do that, dude. Cause like I'll get really high before I go do shit, dude. <laughs> I'll get really fucking high, especially when I exercise. I love going out and doing stuff, dude. Like, oh, it's the best, dude. It's the fucking best, dude. Like you, you really do fucking like. I don't know. For me, like, sometimes you smoke enough weed and you get that paranoid stance. But for the most part, it's just like, oh, that's it. Like helps clear my mind, you know. If you get like, um, I don't know, it takes away your ego in a sense, you know. It kind of like. It doesn't allow you to, uh, to like, get an ego because you're always constantly just, like, in a situation where you'd be, like, you know, okay, well, no, we're going to do it this way. But then you get high, you're like, ah, no. You second think, you, you second, you don't second guess yourself, but you, you reevaluate stuff. You know, you reevaluate the situation and you, you make a better determination when you're high, I think, at least in my opinion. If you were to do hot yoga mm-hmm. while, is the terminology baked? Yeah. Okay. Totally would be. Look how you cool I am for knowing that. You're fucking on um, point. Would you, dude. like, sweat out the drugs? I, I, uh, you could. I mean, essentially, yeah, you're sweating all that. You're sweating everything, all toxins that you're putting in. I'm not saying marijuana is a toxin, but, yeah, essentially, I would assume you're sweating everything out. Weird. Yeah. I mean, you come out, like, you're still high, at least, you know, I was. <laughs> you come out, like, you're just like, fuck. Like, I've, I went to the movies, dude, and I ate, like, two fucking, uh, uh, THC gummies and I um, went and watched uh, some movie and then, like I, I watched the movie I was like oh this is good you know it's a good movie I enjoyed it and like I, I was like I'm like I'm decently high right now I'm like I'm not that high but I'm, you know I'm high and then like I come out of the, mo- the movie theater and I see the sun and I'm just like whoa I'm really fucking high and then I got behind my car and I, like the wheel of my car I'm like whoa I'm really fucking high right now <laughs> just can't believe this shit and, like then yeah I, I don't know I've always preferred pot over alcohol you know, that's always been my, my favorite, my favorite thing. So, yeah, yeah. What was what, that? What, what would you say your favorite drink is? Like, you, do you drink? Not very often. No. Yeah, because like, it doesn't really seem like you do. There were issues with that in college, okay. but um, I've kind of. Um... I would say my whole entire twenties was an issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I understand, man. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't really drink. Like, I'll drink. I drank a couple months ago. I went to Portland hmm. and uh, went for a bachelor party. Got pretty tore up, and then I was like, "Oh yeah, this is why I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do this, dude. I can't." It's like getting older, dude. Like you said, man. Like I don't know. I can't handle these hangovers. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I don't know. What was what was the worst time you ever got hungover? Let me think. Um, I actually cannot particularly remember any hangovers. There have certainly been. Um, mm-hmm drunken scenes and situations i don't okay. recall maybe i slept through them every time i don't know okay um i remember one of the the craziest drunk situations i was ever in yes. was at the warp tour campgrounds uh-huh. at the gorge uh-huh. have you ever been to like a warp tour no okay well it's just it's like it used to be this festival where like you know teenage teenage punk rockers and like adult like you know 20 year old 30 year old punk rockers all can join and we just go watch badass punk rock bands throughout the day, right? It's all around the gorge, so it's like different stages everywhere. Everybody gets sunburned, you know, everybody's having a good fucking time, everybody goes in the mosh pit. And then afterwards, um, you know, a few thousand of those people decide to stay over at the the gorge campgrounds, and basically anarchy ensues for like <laughs> twelve like not even twelve hours, dude. Like it's it's over with by like five o'clock in the morning, basically. I don't know. I don't know, but I remember this one year, dude, we were just like all fucking wasted, dude. And, like, it seemed like the, I don't want to call it violence, dude, but the, the destruction amped up every single year. It got worse and worse and worse and worse. And so, like, every year you'd go there and, yeah, 
a porta potty would get knocked over. <laughs> yeah, something would get lit on fire. But this one year, dude, they lit a whole set of porta potties on fire. My God. So like five or six porta potties are all on fire. So these fire trucks are trying to come through, dude. Why did they do this? Oh, dude, alcohol. It's it's well, you think about it. Going back to that baked fucking, you know, your baked brain shit, dude fucking sunburned all day and then they add fucking liquor to that and this is like all that testosterone you know comes out dude and like <laughs> they just fucking people get crazy because we would start chanting stuff you know and, we, and it'd just be amazing dude like, you're just like it was like one of the most best amazing times ever dude. but this one time though the fire truck's coming in and people are throwing beer bottles at the fucking at the we're just standing back like what the fuck is going on we're like bap 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 just smashing them dude so, I don't know, man. That was like, yeah, like I said, dude, my fucking 20, my, my teenage years through my 20s up until like right about into my 30s, like right towards the, like I, at, at the end of my 20s, I started calming down a little bit. And then it was like 30, 31, 32 when I was like, all right, I'm just going to stay home more. I'm not going to drink anymore. So, I remember uh, we went to, um, oh, what the fuck was it, LaSalle? The last time I got really fucking trashed, it was right, like, a couple weeks after, um, fucking hair, or, uh, The Graduate. Because, okay. like, it was a couple weeks after that is when I quit drinking, when I first initially quit drinking. And it was, like, we went to La Salle for, um, was it a Mardi Gras? They had a Mardi Gras? Yes. Like, and they had, like, a huge auction and shit. And, yeah. <laughs> every, every time I went to that, dude, it was, I always thought it was weird that we were getting drunk in high school. But it was fun. A religious high school. Yeah, a religious high school at that, you know. It's private, so, I mean, you know able to get away with that and stuff so but uh, yeah jessica got all pissed off because like she was like oh i'm gonna drink tonight i was like okay i'll be i'll be sober driver but she wasn't really drinking even though she was drinking at her own pace you know like me i'm just like i'm like oh i'm just gonna start drinking and then like <laughs> before by the before you know it if i'm with friends and stuff i'm just like i'm i'm wasted dude completely wasted and it just yeah. that next morning that hangover was pretty bad i was like i don't think i want to do this anymore i don't think i want to do this unpleasant yeah now we both quit smoking yeah yeah that's half the reason I, I quit drinking was just so I could quit smoking. So what was your experience, though, with quitting? Um, let me see. What year was it? No, so 2018. Um, that February, I was out of them one weekend. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of a gross day outside, and I did not want to go get more. So I said, okay, well, I just don't have any until Monday. Mm-hmm. I just never got any more. Wow. So you just quit cold turkey? I did. Wow, dude. Did you? How how bad were your cravings for that shit? I wanted one, mm-hmm. but um, not particularly like craving okay. them. I fucking uh, I like. I wasn't able like. I remember one time, the first time I tried quitting cold turkey, like I like two hours into it, dude. I was like seeing like my like hands were shaking and shit, dude. Like for me, dude, that nicotine withdrawal was hardcore, dude. Like I'd use patches, but you know. I had to do, like, the three-month patch system. So it was, like, every month, like, you start with the strongest dose. dose then the second month, you do the second strongest. By the third month, you're on, like, seven, like, ten milligrams or some shit. And then, like, I remember being really scared. Like, after I got off the patches, I was like, oh, I hope I don't, like, just want a cigarette. I said, well, go smoke a bunch of cigarettes. And, uh, yeah, dude, it was, you know, but I was fine, you know. But it was when I would start drinking, though, that's when I'd start smoking. Like, even, like, even though I haven't, I've quit for three years, when I went on that Portland trip, dude, I got shit face oh, yeah. drunk, dude. So, like, I thought I'd be like, oh, I could have a couple drinks and not smoke. I, it's been a long time, Kevin. It has been a long fucking time. I, the first, no. No, I, I've smoked so many cigarettes that night. I remember waking up the morning all hungover. I had a cigarette in my pocket. I was like, yeah, never again. Thankfully, I didn't go back to smoking or anything. I was, I was fine. You know, I'm fine. But it just, I guess that's good in the sense, you know, I can go out and binge and smoke a bunch of cigarettes. But I mean, event- if you get doing that, you're eventually going to start smoking again. That's true. Do you have like the smoking dreams? I had them. I've I had, had them. that a couple of times. What are your dreams like? Um, I'll be like, not even really doing anything, but like I'm smoking in the dream. Okay. And I think, oh fuck, I smoked again. Right. Like you feel so bad about it. Well, now it hasn't been a year and yeah. a half. And then I wake up and I think, oh, <laughs> good, I didn't. I know you wake up in the morning and you feel like, oh. Oh shit, that was scary. Like I could have fucking been so. <laughs> thank God. Like thank you for. <laughs> uh, so it's only been a year and a half since you quit. Yes, just about. Nice, dude. Well, congratulations, dude. Thank you. Congratulations thank to you, you, man. How, what was that, like when you were smoking? Like, like your at your worst, dude. What were you? How much were you smoking a day? I wasn't even smoking that much. Maybe a pack every two to three days. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. 
I would say I was a pack every like day and a half. Okay. So like, but did, were you the type of smoker that like woke up in the morning like first thing you're smoking a cigarette? No. Um, it would be um consistent throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Like when my day was done, I'd just go to bed. I'd wake up whenever I got up and got on with my day. Then I'd go out and have the first one. Wow. But um, I know there are people who like they'll be getting up in the night to smoke. Oh, that's me, dude. That's as soon me. as they wake up, they reach over and they gotta have one. <gasps> I was never at that. Two point. o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that's why my nicotine withdrawals were so hard, dude. Like I, yeah, I'd wake up in the middle of the night. I'd go smoke a cigarette. <laughs> my dad, like he, uh, he was a hardcore smoker, dude. He was like two packs a day at certain points in his life. I think and there was like Marb Reds, dude. I don't know what kind of cigarettes did you? You smoked like Camels though, right? Marb Reds. Oh, you, oh, you did smoke Marb Reds. Our reds were the best. I always like my reds. Which I don't know where I got yeah. that because um, there was never anyone in my upbringing. Like, that wasn't yeah. in my family or my social background or anything. Yeah. I guess to be cool, although by that point in time it wasn't cool, so I don't know why I ever started up, but um, I sure the hell did. So Mar Reds were, like, your first? Your, yes. The first and only brand? Pretty much. The, I part, tried a couple brand. of things oh, over God. the years, but... Nothing else ever really caught on. In high school, we started with, like, camels. Cam- but then they, they changed the formula on them, dude. They, they, all of a sudden, like, you weren't, like, when you took a drag of them, you get, like, this weak fucking drag off, and it's like, what the fuck is this shit? Ew. Fuck you. And then that's why I went to Marbs, dude, because Marbs were way more harsher. So then I was like, oh, fuck this. Because I, I always thought Marbs were kind of like a redneck brand, you know? Yeah. Like, that's what rednecks smoke with Marbles. <laughs> Because, like, there wasn't a thing that was, like, a, yeah, like they had, like, the KKK symbol on them. Do you ever hear about that? No. Tell yeah. Me. Okay, so, like, I would have to look at the pack, and I'd have to, like, research it a little bit more. But I remember back in the day, like, there was, like, folklore about how, like, if you put, you'd be held it a certain way, it made it look like KKK or something. So That's, that's why bad. I, yeah. That's why I always associated it with, like, racist people or something, dude. Like, all oh, fucking KKK members smoke Marv Reds, <laughs> motherfucker. Oh, you smoking Marv Reds? But get the fuck out of here. <laughs> hey, man. Peace and love, dude. But, I don't know. What, when did you start smoking cigarettes? Um, end of senior year high school. End of senior year. Starting, like, my sophomore year. Cool. How'd you start smoking? Like, describe your first cigarette to me. Um, a friend smoked, and she was like, hey, you want a cigarette? And I'm like, daddy's not here. Yes, I do. I never coughed or anything. Okay. I took right up with it. Did you get, like, the... Was it like not the spins, but you get that like that that rush, that tobacco, the nicotine rush? I don't know if I ever really got that. Yeah, dude, because I remember that's why I, I started smoking was because like you got that like head rush. I'm like, whoa, this is fucking cool. <laughs> it goes away within like two weeks. I wish I would have never started smoking, man. That was like right. one of my biggest regrets, dude. My mom let me start smoking, dude. Like my <laughs> mom straight up was like. My sister started smoking cigarettes. And I didn't smoke cigarettes because my mom always smoked cigarettes in the house when we were kids. Mm. Which I kind of look back on. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> like, I've been exposed to how much fucking cigarette smoke in my lifetime, dude. Like, uh, that's not fucking cool, man. It was the '80s though, and the '90s, dude. <laughs> my mom still smokes this. <laughs> I find it weird when you like, as I like, especially once I became like in, into my 20s, to going over to somebody's house and be able to smoke inside. Mm-hmm. It was a rare luxury. But it was, like, a, such a nice luxury, dude. It's <laughs> get all drunk and, like, you don't have to go outside in the middle of winter. One place where I lived um, was three guys who all lived together. All three of us smoked. Mm-hmm. And I just remember that first winter, all three of us were in there. There were these filthy ashtrays everywhere. The house yeah. was just full of smoke. I don't mind the smell of cigarette smoke. I actually think it smells really good. But, oh, my God, the ashtrays. Ooh. Is this just because nobody was dumping them? Pretty much. Yeah. I, um... Yeah, because ashtrays, like, I was like, you didn't, I don't really think there's too much of an industry for an ashtray anymore. No. You know? It's definitely, like, a foregone industry. You don't hear you don't hear about the ashtray no. industry. You used to have, like, decor items. Yeah, they were, right? They were. I mean, they, like, the, those, like, gla- the glass ones mm-hmm. that you would see. Like, yeah, like, they are, they were, like, a piece of art. Not, not art, but, you know, at least decor mm-hmm. for your home, right? And people's lighters, too. They'd have, like, those things on the couch. Oh, would you like a cigarette, Rose? Oh, I certainly would, Bill. <laughs> You don't see anything like you don't that see anymore. That. Yeah, I think, I think people are coming with the times. But people vape though now, dude. They do. You know, I kind of frown more. I, you know, I frown more on people vaping. They're like, "Oh, these don't smoke." It's like, don't be a fucking pussy. <laughs> like, I don't know what that shit's gonna do to you, man. Because they they say supposedly that it causes popcorn lung. <laughs> okay. and I don't think cigarettes cause popcorn. I mean, it causes cancer, but 
I don't think it causes popcorn. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it sounds god awful. It's uh, it's like a respiratory thing, you know, and like people got it obviously from working in the popcorn industry, like the uh-huh. microwaveable po- popcorn. That stuff's really bad for you. <laughs> so like, yeah, again, like you, you know, you'd have to do some research on it. I don't know. Again, I'm not a very smart person, but I remember hearing about fucking you know people in the industry getting sick, and I don't know if there was ever a class action lawsuit or anything about it, but. It developed a disease called popcorn lung, and supposedly vaping, you know, it causes that as well. Oh, God. Yeah. I tried vaping, but, like, I always got pissed off because, like, you put in... I didn't have, like, a good, like, holder for it, mm-hmm. so I just put it in my pocket, and, like, it fucking, like, break. I remember one time getting, like, all that fucking liquid in my fucking pocket. Yeah. So, like, fuck this. I'm going back to smoking. Like, <laughs> not going to deal with this anymore. I fucking... I look down on vaping, though. Hardcore. Bunch of pussies. <laughs> 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 so... So what do you got plans for the summer, dude? I mean, we're here, we're sitting here. It's just turning. I think the the week this release is gonna. I'm gonna drop this this coming week. So we got Fourth of July. This is the Fourth of July episode. What do you got plans this week? I'm not up to much of anything. Yeah. It's a day off for me. Okay. Um. Okay. Here's what's a drag about this year. I get the fourth off. It happens in the middle of the week this year, mm-hmm. so you don't get a three day weekend. Right. Because like it's a Thursday. Right. Yeah. That's. I know. It does suck, dude. Because like, well, I mean, at least we don't. I guess you could take that Friday off if you have vacation time. Yeah, but I could. I didn't take it off. I got to work that Friday too. Yeah. But I mean, at least you got the weekend right after that. Right. So. Not that I don't want the day off. I just like when that happens. I woke up this morning and I was like, "Oh fuck, I gotta go work tomorrow." But I was like, "Oh yeah, it's fucking three, a four day week, dude." So, do you know what's the greatest? What? When Christmas is on a Thursday, because mm. you get Christmas off, you get the day after Christmas off, you get Saturday, you get Sunday. Yeah, there you go. What's the worst is when it's on, like, Tuesday, Tuesday. because then you got to go to work on Monday, you get mm-hmm. Tuesday and Wednesday, you yep. have to come back for Thursday and Friday, and that's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, dude, because, like, you, yeah. I, my, my job, like, I'm not able, like, they, they have, like, a blackout, because, like, it's all customer service based, so, like, mm. we, uh, we have a blackout period from, like basically thanksgiving until new year's new year's day or whatever in terms of like requesting time off so like if it happens on a friday like christmas is on a friday or something then that benefits me but if it's on a thursday i still have to work that friday mm-hmm. like we always have to work like black friday and shit and all that stuff and that sucks. so like ho- normal holiday time off like i don't really get but the cool thing i get though is like a, a floater holiday for martin luther king Ooh. so they just give it to us like and i think that's kind of the reward for getting through the hall the, the seasonal period and shit <laughs> Is that hey man take this day and you can use it whenever and it's a free paid day off so it's like cool so oh, that's I would, cool. I always use it because like my kids like for their because um for the kids they school their school that they go to uh, they're able to uh, take like in winter time they're able to like go they have certain days that are designated like ski days or, or fun days or whatever and so like they're able to go to White Pass and like ski and stuff and like you know like you gotta pay for it yourself and stuff but like it's a, it's a it's an excuse day off from school wow. to go do it and so like we'll go i'll use my floater holiday in the last couple of years i've gone out there to ski and like snowboard and yeah i mean you come out sore and shit but like i think skiing's a little easier than fucking uh snowboarding i'm just gonna say that i don't know if you've been skiing before i know nothing about either but um so like when you're skiing okay you're like on the snow and people can't see me but i'm acting this out really well okay so around the snow you've got these poles What's going on? Like, are you flying through the snow and pushing yourself? Is that what you're doing? You're not pushing yourself. You're using that more or less as an anchor if you need to, like, kind of, like, shift or anything. Like, Mm -hmm. you kind of just, like, you got your feet in front of you. So, like, they do pizza face. Like, if you you eat, like, make it look like a pizza. Like, I'm doing it with my feet right there. I know you can't see. But if you do that, that slows you down. And then if you do that, that's going to make you go faster. So, basically, you're just using this as, like, an anchor and just kind of, like, you know, if you need to turn, you just... Because there's a certain way of turning. It's like an opposite thing. I forget exactly what it is. But, like, you lean the opposite way to go that way. So, like, I did the bunny hill because, like, I've never been skiing until this this year. Yes. I did the snowboarding the year before, and I didn't like it because your feet are, like, just... I don't... I don't... I'm not really an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> you know? Like, I really am not. So, like, the idea of going really fast down a hill really isn't that fun to me. And so instantly I start to panic and I'm like, all right, I got to slow down. And like with the skate, with the snowboards, you're strapped in. So it's a lot harder. And like, you got to like the way you to stop, you have to like turn yourself and then you automatically like, you're going to fall over just cause you're strapped in. But with skis, I was able to like maintain my balance a little bit better. 
But I did the bunny hills and shit, and I got pretty good at that. And then I tried going down, like, this little, this one area. And I, I got pretty good to where, like, I wasn't falling over or anything. And I was able to ride it down at a pretty safe speed and not fuck up too bad. But it's, I mean, it's, anybody that hasn't gone, I mean, it's, it's, it's worth going to. Now, snowboarding. I know mm-hmm. absolutely nothing. So you're yeah. strapped to a board. Yep. You're in snow. Yep. What you're happens? Like, you fucking die almost. <laughs> it's. It, I mean, you're basically you're just you're just going down like I don't know. You ride a, it's like a skateboard in a sense, but like you know, again, you're strapped in, and you're just using your weight to go back and forth and stuff and like to change directions. And you can like, you can like hop up with your you know bring your board off the ground while you're going like 40, 50 Ooh. miles an hour and stuff and like. You, you watch videos of it, people could do some cool fucking shit, dude. But to me, again, like, I'm not an adrenaline junkie, so. Right. Like, I'm not, like, especially when it comes to, like, going out in, like, the Columbia or something, you're doing, like, the rafting on the, behind the boats. Yes. You ever done that shit? No. Dude, that shit's, I don't know. I'll, once I start doing it, it's fun, but, like, the idea always gives me anxiety. <laughs> it's just, like, you could die doing that. Like, do I really need to risk my life? But then you get out there and then, like, like, you'll be on, like, the, so they're going, like, you know, 40 miles an hour mm-hmm. or whatever, and, like, you're hanging on the tube and shit, and then, like, they start to go into a curve, and that's, like, really when you gotta, like, when they're turning, that's when you start, like, moving a lot, and, like, you have the potential to, like, fall off, and if they're going really fast, like, this one time, I just remember I was gripped to it, and then, like, I slowly I fell off, and I just remember falling off, and I, I fell off backwards, and I just, like, saw it, it's, like, you smash into the water and shit, and, like, you just... You don't die, obviously, but it's still it's it's pretty intense, dude. So well, I don't know. Now that now that we're talking about summer, I'm like, oh shit, now it's now now's the time, dude. It's supposed to get warm though, right? Yes, and it is. Yeah, I mean, today, it means we're definitely well into the 80s today. Well, that's good. I think it's gonna get like high 80s into the 90s next week. I struggled this last month because it kept getting so cold and so hot again. Mm-hmm. And I have like this gas furnace that you have to turn on and off. And I got really fucking tired of turning this thing on and off. It's fucking bullshit, dude. I'd get so cold in my house and it's June. <laughs> Shit. Dude. It was like last night, dude. I slept with all, all my windows open, dude. It was like warm as fuck, dude. It's like, it was cold. It was better outside than it was in my house. It was like 76 degrees. And it was like 70 degrees outside, dude. Wow. At like 11 o'clock at night. And it's just like, fuck <laughs> this, dude. I will pay for AC, dude. Like, that's like I have like I have like PTSD from when I was a kid. Dude. My mom never turned the air conditioner on, okay. so my 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 memory remembrance of summers in my teenage years was so horrible. Dude. <laughs> Baking, I'll pay the extra money. <laughs> I started told my mom that too. She's like, "Oh, <laughs> you cheap, mom. What can I say, dude? Like you're fucking cheap." I don't know. So you got so you got any major plans though going into the fall and the summer? What are your what are your goals, Kevin? We'll, we got to end this on a high note. Okay. Um. Goals, goals. Um, oh shit, that's not a high note question. Okay, no, no. Um, I don't have goals. I get through week by week. Go, just take it week by week. Okay, okay. So on an average week, how how do you how do you like to see your week go by though? Okay, so um, I start out my week. Um, by Thursday, I feel like I'm actually going to see the end of the week. Mm-hmm. Friday comes. Fridays go quickly because you, like, know what's coming and shit is winding down for the work week. Right. Um, Saturday comes. That's good. Sunday, you know Monday's coming, but it's still Sunday, so that's okay. Yeah. And then um, Monday, you start all over. And you're, like, in your Sundays, like, today, because we're recording this on a Sunday, obviously. Yes. Uh, like, you wake up in the morning, you have a little bit of anxiety. As the day goes further, you get that little bit more and a little bit more mm-hmm. and a little bit more. And you're like, fuck, fuck, it's 10 o'clock. I'm going to bed. i got to wake up and go to fucking work in the morning. And you know what's going to be there. You know it's always going to be there because time never changes. Kevin Richardson, thank you so much for coming on the podcast that no one listens to. Thank you for having me be on it. Dude, it was so much fun, man. And uh, next time next time um, you have anything that you want to promote, you can always use this as a platform. Right on. Awesome, dude. Thank you fucking so much, Kevin Richardson. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will, uh, we'll see you guys next time. As always, peace. Peace.